Hey guys, it's Britt. Today I'm here to talk to you again about mommy bloggers and family influencers, whatever, here on YouTube. So if you're interested, please keep watching. All right, you guys, so tonight I wanted to pop on and share with you some of the most popular um, mommy vloggers and family vloggers on YouTube. I hear a really common statement among people who watch these channels. I know a lot of my subscribers don't, but once in a while I will get a couple comments like, hey, I subscribe to them because they're relatable or I find it motivational to watch their channels. And I wanted to go on some of the most discussed channels and really look at their recent content and try to figure out, okay, am I missing the point? Are they really relatable? And maybe I just don't get it because I don't have kids or whatever. Um, I don't think that I'm missing anything here. And I wanna share with you guys sort of a overview of each of these channels. And let's discuss some of their recent videos. And of course, I welcome you guys to share your thoughts in the comments down below. Maybe if you're looking at this in a different light, that's all good, we can have a conversation. But based on looking at these channels, I see nothing relatable and nothing that is motivational about these people. I see a bunch of wealthy, entitled family vloggers who flaunt their wealth, they participate in flex culture, and they use their following to continue to build their fame and success on YouTube, all while including their children. The first person I wanna talk about, this is someone who I haven't done a focused video on, but I am fully aware of who she is, Tara Henderson. She has 667,000 subscribers, and she has been on YouTube since 2014. And on her description, it says, hi everyone, welcome to my channel. I am a mama of two girls, which she hasn't even updated. She has three kids now and she's pregnant with the fourth. And I talk about a variety of different things from pregnancy to motherhood. And if you have anything you would like me to film, leave me a comment and I'd be more than happy to. Really boring um, description there. Let's look at some of her videos. So two days ago, she, update, uh, she uploaded what we eat in a day, wife and husband, dieting versus pregnant, nest with me, preparing for a baby, day in the life with three kids, I can't believe this, and she's at a doctor's office. She's obviously using a scare tactic. Let's just see what she is doing over there. So her big I can't believe this was that her hematoma is gone. You know, I cannot stand when these people use scare tactics. She has, I'll show the thumbnail. It's in the doctor's office. She has a crying face and she looks all surprised. I have a distaste for this, I really do, because you're using emotion and scare tactics to gain views, and this video has 174,000 views. It is her most viewed video in the last week because she's using a scare tactic by playing with people's emotions and getting them concerned. And then once you actually watch a couple of minutes of the video, it's about a hematoma being gone. Now that thumbnail could have been taken that something was wrong with her baby or something was wrong with her, or it was some sort of bad news medically, just as a general you know, message. So I don't like that. I think it's really scummy. But the next video is Day in the Life, Pregnant Mama 3. Clean, decorate, bake, crafts, Valentine's Day, who cares? So these moms do all these hauls and I really don't think that they even care how unrelatable that is to their audience. You have single parents or even, you know, not single parents watching your video, helping you build your wealth. And there are other pregnant moms who cannot afford bottles in a stroller and a car seat and all of this kind of stuff. 
they don't even think about what that looks like. And it would be one thing any other day of the year, but the fact that some of the things that I've seen during the big Rona time over the last year, if you're going to do this kind of stuff, fine. But don't do it when people are in financial crisis, they are in medical crisis, where they are not able to pay their household bills, they're not able to get you know, work or childcare or anything like that. People are doing so many different things just to try to survive. And then you have people like this who want to come out and just show everyone how they spent $2,000 at Target on a bunch of baby stuff that half the stuff they probably don't even need. This would have been, I might be able to accept it a little bit more if she would have said, well, I bought a couple things that we actually legitimately needed. But since I was at the store, I also bought this stuff and it's going to go to my local women's shelter for moms in need. At least pair it with a good deed. If you're going to flaunt your wealth, at least pair it with a good deed. And then her kid had a sixth birthday party. I mean, the birthday parties that these parents do for their kids are so over the top. I was lucky if I had like a, a pool day with my friends and, and a fancy birthday cake. That was like over the top for my birthday. And you have these, um, you know, influencers who have built their wealth by exploiting their kids. So their kids get birthday parties with, you know, the craziest things that you've ever seen. But I think that it just goes to show how tone deaf and ignorant all of them really are. And on top of it, you guys, like, aside from me not having kids, this content is mind numbing. It is so boring. All of their personalities blend together. You know, I can't tell. Personality-wise, I wouldn't be able to tell you one from the other because they all talk the same. Half of them look the same. They have the, you know, the wavy blonde hair and the white kitchens and the, uh, you know, tan and white uh, bed sheets and everything is just the same. The thumbnails are the same. The Christmas decorations are the same. It is so boring. Next, let's talk about Liza Adele. I only know about Liza Adele because of my friend Laurel Bonfanti. She has a channel here on YouTube. She talks a lot about like anti-mommy vlogger stuff. She is a mom, but she's actually someone that, you know, anyone could relate to. And she also doesn't, um, she's not like a family vlogger. She just does like commentary and stuff, but she mentioned Liza Adele. And she used to watch Liza a while ago and then has recently given feedback on kind of Liza's growth. And I think that's one of the most frustrating things for subscribers is to watch someone when they're small and then see them turn into someone completely different than they were when you found them when they were smaller. And that's something that's always been on, you know, kind of front and center for me is sticking to my guns digging my heels in and making sure that I just stay true to myself. You know, it's really not that hard to do in my opinion, but obviously it's very hard for some of these mommy vloggers to do based on the transitions that we have seen with some of them. So Liza Adele has 121,000 subscribers. She's been on since 2015. Some of her recent videos is a surprise pregnancy test results, back to blonde hair, baby number three, building our forever home. They're all building homes. It's kind of funny how a lot of them have been exposed for taking the PPP loans and now everyone wants to just, you know, have all new furniture and be building their dream homes. New house decor. Our new couch finally came in. I can only imagine there was probably some backstory paired with this couch not being delivered and all of the drama that happened with it. You know, you have people who literally cannot put food on their table and then you have these idiots over here, uh, you know, flaunting their new house decor and talking about um, new bedroom reveal, going back to blonde, like all of this shit is just so unrelatable. Next we have Tiffany Beeston. Ooh. She has 492,000 subscribers. She has been on YouTube since 2006, so she's actually been around for a while. 
new home build. Of course, she's another one building, you know, the home. Uh, party prep, nightly cleaning routine. They all do the same shit, you guys. And like all of the thumbnails look the same. Trader Joe's haul, Valentine's Day, clean with me. Why do you need to clean your house for Valentine's Day? Just clean your house because you need to clean your house. Like what I eat in a day, extreme kitchen organization. Who cares? This is boring. And this is not... Um, this is not relatable. This is not relatable to most people that are subscribers to channels like this. Building a custom home, doing an out of control birthday party for your child. These are not relatable video ideas. Most people don't have money to go to Trader Joe's and just spend a whole bunch of money on groceries. Most people are sticking to a budget and going to a normal grocery store. Target haul, like all they do is shop at, at, all they do is spend hundreds of dollars at Target like multiple times a week. Target and Starbucks. Next, let's talk about Shannon Rose. You guys, I've known about Shannon Rose for about four years now. She got into some drama many years ago and she came across my radar and I realized what a dumpster fire she was. She is not like the other mommy vloggers in her content. But I do consider her a family vlogger because she does use, you know, pregnancy and that kind of stuff as content. She really doesn't upload it very often. Baby names we love but won't be using. FabFitFun. P.O. Box unboxing. How I make necklaces. Who cares? My thoughts on teen moms whatever. She doesn't upload that often, but I did want to throw her in here because, oh boy, she is quite a dumpster fire. And she really is known for exaggerated story times. And you never really know if you're getting an honest story from her because she's been caught in so many lies. And on top of it, she is a great example of someone who, in my opinion, has just gone totally overboard with the Botox and the fillers. And, you know, that paired with all of the nonsense that she spews, like none of that is relatable. None of it is entertaining and none of it is genuine. So next we have good old bits of Brie. We know what she's all about. Valentine's Day, clean with me. Again, why do we have to clean for Valentine's Day? Is this a thing that I just don't know about? I clean my house on a Tuesday, on a Saturday, on a, you know, Monday evening, like Valentine's Day. I can understand maybe cleaning for Thanksgiving if you're having family over. It's very weird to me, but we're familiar with her content. Another cleaning motivation. You guys, nobody needs to watch these mommy vloggers in their yoga pants or their shorts clean the house to get motivated. If you need motivation, you know what motivates me? Going to Target and buying new cleaning supplies. For some reason, that motivates me to wanna to come home and clean my house. Buy some new cleaning supplies, put on a really good documentary or some really good music, get it done and move on with your day. It should not have to be this big ordeal. And then we all know about how she moved to Hawaii even though she really didn't. So that's kind of her deal. She's sitting at 388 thousand subscribers right now. Next is probably the bottom of the barrel next to Shannon Rose, Aaron Williams, 359,000 subscribers. Aaron is a known R word. There is documented proof of that and it is disgusting. I don't understand how she has any following. She is also one who, I think she went to Disney World like seven times during, um, during the pandemic with her kids and she is just one who doesn't care about the Rona, doesn't care that you shouldn't be uh, going to theme parks or traveling. I don't know if it was Disney World or Disneyland, it doesn't matter, it's a theme park. You don't need to be going there. Do you know there are people who have had to have Zoom birthday parties because they have not left their house. And you want to go to a fucking theme park multiple times during lockdown because you're that entitled.
Her videos are safari animal birthday party, come to the ranch with me, decorate with me, shop with me, and then I'm back. So she evidently took, it looks like a three month break, and then also heading back to Disney. Disney World. So it looks like Disney World is where they went. On top of her content not being relatable, nobody can relate to going to a ranch or spending a bunch of money that they don't have on Christmas bullshit. So on top of that not being relatable, she's she's an R word. And that's documented. Why would anyone want to support that? If you support her, then you might as well support Jeffree Star. Then we have the royalty family. So the royalty family is more on the tier with like the Ace family. They have almost 12 million subscribers and their content is completely cringeworthy. They 100% their kids. They do, we turn our house into a candy store. Our house is flooded, devastating with like the sad faces. They do over the top clickbait, just like it's our life really triggering thumbnails with sad children and you know whatever it's not okay and i don't understand how people like this have a following again this is even a better example nobody can tell me that this is relatable content nothing about this is relatable and on top of it as far as the entertainment value this is faker beyond fake. It's cringeworthy. It's so fake. I assume that it's mostly children watching this content, which is even more problematic. It goes back to the Ace family having primarily children as their audience. So when they act like jerks, they're broadcasting that to kids. When they want to scam their subscribers, they're scamming kids. When they're traveling during a pandemic, they're doing that in front of kids and saying this is okay. So I don't understand, again, who, like, who is watching this garbage? So the last person we need to talk about in this video is It's Our Life, Kendall Rich. I've talked about her before. This is the one who loves to battle the haters on Instagram, and she loves to go back and forth with people. She's sort of like a Kimberleya, not as bad, but she loves to go back and forth in DMs and comments and basically just call everyone a hater. So their channel is at 1.3 million subscribers. Five Below Sibling Gift Exchange shocked by what happened to her. Let's see what that is. They all, they, they're all clickbait. Okay, so she got a tooth pulled. What happened? Shocked by what happened to her. So fake. Target pink versus red, no budget shopping spree. Like none of this is relatable. None of this is inspirational or entertaining. Again, I don't, get it and I'm not going to continue saying that because I really just do not understand who is tuning into this trash every day. Um, I don't, I know that some people enjoy watching content because it's almost like you're living through someone if someone is living this crazy lifestyle that you're not living. Some people that like checks a box for them. For me, I can't stand it. I want to watch people that I can connect with. And when they put out videos, I can say, wow, like that's something that I would do or that's how I feel. Like I can relate with them. It builds this really genuine connection and that's what I look for on YouTube. But I think it goes back to what I said with the royalty family and with the Ace family. A ton of kids are watching this content. So that means even more that when they're putting out problematic garbage, they're not putting it out to adults that can think logically. They're putting it out to kids and saying, this is normal, this is okay, this is all good, here it is, take it all in. Which is even worse than if they were putting it out to adults that can think for themselves and say, this is garbage and this is dumb. Why am I watching this? I should be watching a true crime documentary on Netflix. So anyway, I did want to share my opinion on all of this. Um, 
make sure you leave your thoughts down below. If there are any other family vloggers that you guys want me to look into, oh, and also um, LeBrant family could also fall into this list for sure, but I also don't want this video to be an hour long. There are several that I didn't include, but they would definitely fit in to this list. So like I said, if there are families that you want me to look more into, make sure you leave them in the comments down below. But for now, if you like the video, please leave me a like and a comment. And if you'd like to see more from me in the future, please subscribe. I'll see you guys soon. Bye.